Aloha, welcome to the Bishop Museum's Library, Library and Archives. <laughs> I'm Hadley Anderson and this is DeSoto Brown. Hello everybody. <laughs> We've got a very special Throwback Thursday for you guys today. Uh, in a partnership with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, the National Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tongarewa and Bishop Museum, the Akuula of and Mahiole of High Chief Kalani Opuu will make their return journey next month in March back home to Hawaii to be displayed here at the Bishop Museum's Hawaiian Hall. Now, right now, you can check out hashtag Kalani Opu'u here on our Facebook page to track the journey home and see all the exclusive behind the scenes aspects of this unprecedented event. The Ahu'ula and Mahiole uh, will be complemented by a companion exhibit called Lele Ona Mamu, the Hawaiian Forest Bird, and on display March 19th through July 31st, which leads us in to our Throwback Thursday today. Feather work. Which is a very wonderful and a very significant subject in traditional Hawaiian culture, of course. And um, what's the date? Oh, by the way, before we get started, what is the date of the arrival and the opening ceremony for this? I think it's the 18th. Is it say There's, and then it's going to be March 19th. March 19th, okay. The day. So okay. it's going to be opening at the same time um, to the public, the uh, Mahiole and Ahu'ula, as well as Le Leona Manu. Exactly, upon which I am working right now. Yeah. Okay, well probably everybody is familiar with uh, what Hawaiian cloaks, Hawaiian featherwork in general look like. And just to get us started, here's a little picture. This is uh, something that was an illustration that was published in a Bishop Museum publication about a hundred years ago, it's a Sarah Bouts. Um, and it is a feather cape. And the way that uh, the featherwork objects were made was that, and let's look at this illustration right here. The feathers of different native birds were used for these pieces. And the yellow feathers were the most significant, the most rare, and the ones which had the most power. And it's because they were the fewest in number. So while there were other, there were birds which had yellow feather, or some yellow feathers, but black and red, and those black and red feathers were used as well. As you can see here in this picture of the O'o, the yellow feathers are just small clumps of them. And so that's why those were the rarest and the most important ones to be used in Hawaiian featherwork. And featherwork was only used by and only made for ali'i. So this is not something that any old person had in his or her possession. And also, feather garments, the, the helmet and the the capes, which are the short versions, the cloaks, which are the long versions, they were only worn by men and only by certain ali'i men. Now, uh, as I said, they were made of feathers. The feathers, which were all very small and tiny, were tied together in little bundles. And then those bundles, or little patches or clumps, were then uh, tied onto a uh, more sort of a framework, sort of a netting that was made of olona fibers, that's a natural fiber. And the because the um, olona could be twisted into different forms and woven into different forms, not only are there garments, but the helmets are have a structure to them with a crest on the top. And there's also a very famous kuka'ili moku figure, which is uh, a manifestation of one of the gods, the major Hawaiian gods, ku, which was carried into battle. That also is something that you see here at Bishop Museum. And they're pretty, typically pretty frightening since they are who and it is battle. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But they could be, you know, they, they're, there are many different formats of feather work. And of course there are kahili as well, but we won't get into those. Now, the important thing that I want to talk about today is that the feather work was recognized by the first visitors to the Hawaiian Islands as being something very special because they'd never seen anything like it anywhere else in the world. And so the featherwork pieces, which were collected and most of them taken back to Europe and some to the United States in the period of the late 1700s and the early 1800s, were always treasured by the people who had them. So they were kept usually in private families and sometimes displayed in great homes because everybody realized how wonderful they were. Well, the interesting thing, and this is, this is true of the, the colonial pu'u pieces that we're talking about right now, these were gifted by Hawaiian men to visitors. They weren't stolen, they weren't taken away uh, without people's permission. They were given. And so in the case of the colonial pu'u mahiole and cloak, those were given by Chief Colonial Pu'u of the island of Hawaii to Captain Cook in 1779. And Cook, as I said, like all the others, recognized how special these were. Now, 
Many of these featherwork pieces therefore traveled to a lot of different places. They didn't just stay here in the Hawaiian Islands. Most of them have come back in the same way that Kalani Opu'u's pieces are now. So here is a photograph of, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of some of the cloaks that are some of the featherwork pieces that have come back. This is the Bloxham Coke that cloak that was uh, donated to Bishop Museum in 1928 after the death of the man who had owned it in Britain. And as you can see here, it is being received by a group of people representing Bishop Museum being held up outdoors outside uh, the Konia building to show it off for its photograph to be taken. And another beautiful, beautiful featherwork piece is this cloak, which is called the Kintor cloak. It too came back to Bishop Museum in 1969, and that was because it was purchased from the family of the owner. And interestingly, it had been in Aotearoa, New Zealand, as has the as have the colonial Puhu pieces. And here's another interesting uh, incident or story. The man right here is Lord Elgin. He was Scottish, and in 1958. He loaned the cloak that had been in his family since 1792 to Bishop Museum to be displayed. And so Lord and Lady Elgin came here with the cloak and it was displayed in Hawaiian Hall. As you see in this photograph, that's them looking at the cloak when it was on exhibit. And after his death in 1967, that cloak was purchased and came back to Bishop Museum also. So this photograph shows it fresh off the plane at Honolulu Airport in January of 1968 on its way to Bishop Museum to become part of our collection here. So the Kalenio Pu'u pieces are following the same path that many of the other featherwork pieces have too. And the very fortunate thing is that Bishop Museum has either been able to receive these as donations or as gifts. In this case, the Kalenio Pu'u helmet and cloak are on loan. And they too followed a similar path. They ended up in a private collection in England. And in 1912, that whole collection, including the featherwork, was donated to Te Papa in New Zealand. And from now, Te Papa coming back here. And it is a wonderful thing that we can be grateful to the people who collected these and the people who cared for them as long as they did, because now they, these treasures have come back to us. Did the Bishop Museum have an extensive featherwork collection to begin with? It did, but again, they came, I think, I couldn't, I couldn't say with absolute certainty, but I think a lot of the, the featherwork pieces we have, the smaller ones did tend to stay here, but the cloaks and the capes probably traveled elsewhere before they came back. Mm -hmm. And here's one last picture. This is, again, Lord and Lady Elgin visiting in 1958, but they are looking at our carved statue of Ku. And Ku is one of the features of the Bishop Museum collection. He's one of the most important things that you see exhibited in Hawaiian Hall. Well, he too had a long journey because he traveled all the way to Massachusetts. And he was one of three Ku figures who still exist today. The other two, one of them is still in Massachusetts. The other one is in the British Museum. And this Ku came back to us in 1895 from Massachusetts, where he was in a collection of something called the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions, which was a Christian missionary society. So, um, again, coming up, this wonderful uh, Colonio Pu'u re, re whatever, return, <laughs> right um, the return after, of after 237 years to Hawaii and to Bishop Museum. So, um, after March 19th, all of you folks out there can come in and see these two wonderful pieces. Well, I have a, I have a great piece of news that the public unveiling and celebration of Kalani Opu'u's sacred Ahu'ula and Mahioli will be Saturday, March 19th at 9.30 a.m. right here at the Bishop Museum on the Great Lawn. And admission will be free for Kama'aina and military with proper ID. All right, so for more information, please go to bishopmuseum.org slash colonialpoo or just to check up on what ha what's happening at the Bishop Museum.
go ahead and visit bishopmuseum.org. Okay. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, thanks for joining us. We hope that you'll come in and see this wonderful piece, uh, which we're very, very pleased. Uh, very excited. And about. very excited about. And also, we really have to thank the other sponsors. Um, Hawaiian Airlines is bringing those pieces here, and uh, Oha and uh, Te Papa have cooperated, and um, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So we'll see you for that, and we'll see you again next Thursday for yet another Throwback Thursday at Bishop Museum. Bye. Aloha.